Hold on. Your mic doesn't seem to be on over there. We did. It was working. It's not on right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art Sherpa. That's Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa. And she's waving at you. Because I, John, stunt hands, have somehow gotten her unplug unplugged. Are you there? Mm, Are you? I okay, I can kind of hear you in the background. I want to come check your mic. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right, let me come back and check you. Hold on a second. All right, right. So you can mime to them what we're doing. Give us some miming. button that's not the button uh hello can you hear me now i can hear you <laughs> hi i'm cinnamon cooney i'm the art sherpa and today i'm going to show you how to paint this red on red santa live streaming and if you were wondering if it was live now you know it was for sure my sip a little coffee oh, i love gosh. an auspicious beginning but don't worry i am going to show you every step of this project so you can complete it at home and hopefully, if you guys are here on the replay, you hung in through our sound bubble and are laughing right now. That's what I hope. I wish for laughter. Hope I'm getting it. <laughs> I think everyone here is uh, <laughs> incredibly understanding as they are saying, good job getting it plugged back in. <laughs> I mean, I should have noticed when I was walking around that I was going further than my tether usually lets me. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I was thinking, wow, the cord is stretching far today. Hmm. Apparently it wasn't. No. All right. <laughs> Already then. Live show. Would you guys like to learn how to do this painting? I'd like to show you. It's super fun. Super, super easy. Okay. Yeah. This is my assessment right now is this is a one hoot. And it's a one hoot because of the small size of the canvas, the few colors. So even though we've got some layers, they're not overtly complicated. I'm going to show you how to draw it in. But of course, if you check the description below, you're going to see a link to our website page for this. And on it is going to be a PDF file of this where you can print that out and trace it. If drawing is not your thing, don't worry about it. And also there's information in the description below about the colors. Be sure where you see the naphthol, uh, you know, below the cad red medium, that's an or. That's just giving you a choice. If you don't have this, that's another good warm red that will work on the alizarin crimson. Um, this is a really weird permanent historic color. Uh, there's not a lot of exchanges for it. So what I will say is if you have a good deep crimson, something that reminds you of the color of blood, that would be the red you're looking for. Something more to the purple than to the orange. More blood than sunset. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Let's put out our colors. Okay. So first I have to paint in my background. I'm not going to obviously paint it over the Santa that I have. Oh, you know what I forgot? No. Nope. Also wishes. Oh yeah. Our wishes are on the canvas already. No? No? No. Oh, man. What's so we need to do a wish. Yeah. And so what I'm going to wish, I'm going to, oh, my goodness, this was been in the water. Don't put watercolor pencils in the water. They've all been. Oh, no. <sighs> it's live, folks. All right. What I'm doing is I'm taking the mushy part of my watercolor pencil off, which normally you wouldn't do because this is all really good pigment, but I'm trying to write here. I wish <laughs> that all the people in the world are safe this holiday just safety i totally wish that everybody to be safe and i wish all the children happy memories of their holidays all around the world whatever they are yeah so there we go all right now i'm ready to put some paint on my canvas <laughs> so i have some mars black over here I also have, and I like to do this, this is just an economy thing. You can use either your Mars Black or your Black Gesso. I like to put out a little of my Black Gesso and my Lizarin Crimson. And the reason is, you see how soft that is, how fluid that is? That's why, like, you could do also a Black Fluid Paint. It just lets me have a thinner first coat. But, of course, you could use just Mars Black or Carbon Black or whatever black you have. I'm going to grab a brush for acrylic painting this is a two inch uh, stiff white nylon brush. They're very inexpensive. They're good brushes and they have a nice width to them and put paint on the canvas well. And I like that. 
I'm going to come and make sure my brush isn't too wet. So see how it's sort of pulling? I'm going to drag off that extra water. I'm going to pull out a little of my black, not too much, and some of my alizarin crimson. So I want to deepen this even darker than its natural color. And I need to get this first coat in so I can get that intense profound red effect so you can get that intense profound red effect so all you have to do is paint this whole canvas with a little bit of black and some red now if you're a younger artist if you're a little brush I want you to really pay attention about how I'm barely coming at my black see how I'm just getting it super careful that's because this is a really powerful pigment and if you use too much of it, it's just going to be a reddish black, which would be too dark for what you're doing and you wouldn't like it. So, uh, so that's what you'd want to do. You just want to be careful with that pigment. And if you're a big brush that's new to painting, that's also a good tip for you as well. What I'm doing here, what you see me doing, seems very energetic, right? I'm just covering my canvas. I'm using a medium force pressure. In other words, I'm this with my brush that hard on the canvas to get my pigment out of the bristles. I'm going to come back over here and load them. Pull, 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 flip. Pull, pull, pull. Come over and get some red. I might be a little bit dry. And when I'm a little bit dry, I come and I just take just the tips of my bristles and get them in the water because I don't want too much water. I don't want my paint swimming in a lake. So this vigorous painting that I'm doing in and coming across is just letting me get a lot of my pigment out of my brush and coating this canvas board, making sure all the white is not showing. Let's flip this over so we're not uncomfortable. Yeah. And again, we're going to come here and go pull, 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 and get the rest of this red. Dip okay. in my bristles there, so I'm really loading it. And finish this off. This deep wine burgundy that we have here, this is going to just set us up for success. And it's a lot of fun, I think, to do red on red paintings. They're really powerful. Fun. I'm going to come over and make adjustments here for you okay so john's gonna adjust my mic or something yeah, and i'm sure. gonna wave at you because i don't think the sound is good oh listen to me swallow <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what you get. kind of a gross asmr video me huh. swallowing hey <laughs> Some of them just freak me out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just listening to noises I'm not okay with. And, you know, we got to. To each his own. I'm going to put out my lizard and crimson. I'm going to put out a little of my Mars black and um, my uh, cad red. No white yet. Which is, and it's another cap I've dropped in the middle of a live show. That's what I do. I drop caps in the middle of live shows. It's my favorite. I'm holding off on my titanium white and my yellow ochre until after I have some of my background in. I'm going to do a quick thing, though, as I'm painting in my background. I'm going to bring over my Santa over here. And I'm going to use some of my chalk. And I'm going to, if you have kids' chalk, you can sharpen it in a sharpener, but you just want some chalk, something that you can sketch lightly on the canvas with that will erase easily with just a little bit of water. I'm going to come from almost a hand's width from the top. I'm going to come over a little bit. And I'm going to just make sure that I have this amorphous little shape right here. My Santa is clearly not this big. I'm not drawing in my Santa. I'm drawing in a place for me to start making sure that I have a deeper value here that I'm going to be adjusting around him. But I know I want this to be darker. So I'm just letting myself know where that is. That's going to help me in this painting. Sometimes knowing where you're going and what you're doing helps you a lot. Sometimes not at all. But in this particular case, super helpful. <laughs> now, 
uh, Linda was asking, did you make that hat? I did not. It's a very fancy hat. So I was, I was doing some holiday shopping for my daughter. And she likes all this weird stuff. And you know how Amazon gives you related search? This stuff started popping up in my related search. And it was like very economical. And I was like, shopping for myself. too. <laughs> <laughs> Show expense. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really reasonable. But they have all these weird little steampunk hats. And I was just like, I love all of these. All right. So what I need is I'm going to go through. And first, I'm going to take a little of my alizarin. Right? Just my alizarin. And I'm going to start coming here. And I'm going to just brush this out. And I'm going to see how rich this is against my canvas. And That's I'm great. having a problem. And this is a problem you guys might have at home. And so I want to zoom in on it. And then I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I have very high quality paint. And canvas is economical. But the brushes and the paint are high quality. Can you see in this area? Oh, yeah. So what's happening? Look, has anyone ever had that happen to them where the paint scrubs off? Yeah. That's because the paint hasn't had a chance to bind to the canvas. And the canvas isn't really that friendly about taking paint, right? The coating and all of that. So it hasn't had a chance to adhere yet. So I, I can do all this subtractive stuff right now. Look how subtractive I can be. That means I'm removing paint. To fix that, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm first going to try drying this with a hairdryer, seeing if I can accelerate how the paint is curing and therefore bonding to the canvas. <laughs> While she's going to do that, I will say, hey, guys, thank you for coming and visiting with us today. Uh, and sorry for the technical hiccups that we're having along the way. You know, it's a live show. Uh, so, and man, there's a lot of you guys out here today. So thanks for coming and visiting. Don't forget that in the links in the description below, you'll find a list of materials, uh, a uh, link to the traceable and all of the other stuff that's kind of, uh, that you might need to accomplish this. Our, 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 uh, and it's, it you link you right back to our website. You can find all that in the description below. So man, uh, it's been a crazy holiday series of events and, we just thank you guys for coming and taking the time during these th this holiday season to visit and paint with us because uh, it's pretty amazing to have a community of people like this come together and to, to celebrate painting the way that, that we get to. And uh, it's just lovely to have you all with us. So thank you for coming and doing that. Please do uh, share your paintings up with us. That's something we'd love to see. Um, it's one of the most rewarding parts of, of what we do is being able to see all the artwork that you guys do. Um, All right. So thank you for sharing that. So I think I have that fixed and it definitely just needed to cure more. There's a lot of reasons why under binding, that's when the paint isn't sticking to itself or to the surface that you're painting on happens. Some is too much water. Sometimes it's the quality of paint and have a good binder in it. And sometimes it's the surface that you're painting does not want to take the paint, right? You can gesso your paintings. I'm going to try again. I'm just going to get my lizard in a little black this time. Come in from the corner. <laughs> So see how I'm getting just a small amount of alizarin and I'm coming and getting a little black, but I'm making sure it's still very red. Because if it's not red, there's no point in coming out here. And I'm going to just scrub this on. So I've got a number 10 bright. This is bristles and synthetic filaments. You just want a brush that you can do what's called a scumble or um, being kind of a scrubby motion with. So you can see how I'm just making these back and forth kind of little crazy brush strokes. And then sometimes I go on the edge and I scumble in. And that's how I get this very soft texture. I'm going to get a little of this and a little more of my black. I'm going to come here and see I'm just building in that texture. The layers. Alizarin is a very transparent color. Uh, something you probably don't know because you have, may not have been painting for a long time. It also is a color that attracts what I like to call the pigment police. What do you mean? <laughs> so there are, um, you know, a lot of things that happen with pigments. And alizarin used to be a very non-color fast color. Loved by artists in general. I'm getting red and black again and coming around the side. Loved by artists in general. But it would fade out fairly fairly quickly compared to other colors. And it was really hard to get some good permanent reds. It used to be in paint that getting a permanent color was just everything because the paint just faded out real fast because they used dyes instead of pigments. 
So alizarin, uh, of course, recently in acrylic paint, it's always probably going to say for you, hue. We don't get real alizarin. We get hue. Acrylic artists never have to worry about the fading of the acrylic paint. Look, it's a light fast one, right? It's the same as Mars black or titanium white. This is as light fast as acrylic paint gets. If you see that LF1, means your alizarin crimson is not going to fade. But sometimes the pigment police will come and tell you that you can't paint with that color because it's a fading and permanent color. And, you know, they, they read it on the Wikipedia page somewhere. <laughs> They're like, you should never, never do it. Now, oil artists and watercolor artists actually have some concerns around this color. If they don't buy hue, they have some options to buy some of the real deal. And they might have a worry, but we don't. So if somebody's like, you can't use a lizard. It's a great color. Hue's fantastic. Not a lot of exchanges for it. It's wonderful to have in the kit. It doesn't fade. Just a weird fact. I don't know. Is that a fun fact? I don't yeah. know. I'm just well, painting this darker here where I know I'm going to have Santa. I'm going to be like enriching a lot of this here. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm starting to put in those darker values around here. You know, Laura was asking. A scumble uh, here. Can you thin your paint as much as you want with nope. water? No. Or without water? You can thin your paint as much as you want with a medium. Like, so if you had a soft gel yeah, and you wanted to use that to thin your paint, you can thin as much as you want. There's a really special uh, product called Airbrush Medium, which is about the consistency of water. It's made for airbrush artists, and it's designed so that they can thin and aerosolize paint. It would not be good with true cadmium. But anyways, thin and aerosolize paint. And so you can actually use that for a wash. It's mm. incredible stuff. It's just hard to find and a little pricey. But if you were an artist looking for a way to thin your acrylic paint and not have it break down, that would be how you would do that. But you can't just thin it with water. And definitely, you can thin with um, most paints. It's about a 30% to paint water mixture before the paint starts to fail. I think there are some student or economy paints that fail much quicker, like almost if you use water. Mm. Not all of them, but some of them, man. It just seems like if you put any water in them at all, they're going to lift up. Do that, the whole painting. Never stop doing that. Not even if you dry it. Not even if you fix the surface. So there's more dark down here. I want to get that in. So I'm kind of making this halo, and then there's going to be this bright red center. And to make things feel bright red, I have to create depth or darkness to do that. Now, to be comfortable, I'm going to move my canvas to the side because I know I'm going to just chalk this in so you can kind of see it. And I'm going to be sort of coming around here and up the side, just darkening this. Can we sort of see that little line of where I'm going? Yeah. That's where I'm going to go. So if you're painting along with me, that's what's happening. And people have talked about like their backgrounds have been so problematic and so challenging getting those first coats on that they haven't even been able to paint along live. So it can be impactful. Isn't this fun? I like doing this yeah. with a brush. Scuffle, 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 scuffle. A little darker than that. I'm getting a little thin. Transparent pigments are a lot of fun and worth having in your kit. Going along, deepening up these edges, making this super nice and rich. Rich. Went even darker right there. A little dark corner down here. I like these little dark corners. These dark feeling areas are wonderful. So now we have this sort of shadow in. I'm going to rinse my brush out from the acrylic paint, and I'm going to do one of my favorite things in painting. Um, in my own personal painting practice, this was one of my jams, um, where I would get certain colors that other artists weren't even entirely sure how I was getting. It was super fun. And that was mixing um, alizarin with cad. <laughs> it does some really cool stuff when you take a little of alizarin with cadmium red. Why is that? It's because this is like this orange red and this is like this blue red. And when you put them together, you get this unbelievable stepped mid-tone red. It's not too bright and not too deep. It's just sort of perfect. And when you work them together against each other like this, and see, I'm just brushing real softly. I'm 
flicking up and back and mm -hmm. it makes a soft and look how soft my pressure is it's not even bending the bristles at all all right so i'm kissing over the canvas the paint's fairly well loaded within my brush so i'm i'm getting to offload a bunch when i come into my center i start to move to my corner and i do this it goes back and forth this little scumble yeah makes that wonderful noise this is good asmr right here <laughs> i could have a whole video of just this noise going and the water noise is super lovely. So I just love the alizarin and the cat. I also really love cat and quinacridone. Sometimes you don't think of mixing two of your favorite blues together. You'll just grab one of your blues or another blue, but you don't think, oh, I'm going to take my ultramarine and my phthalo and mix them together and get a new color that I really, really like that doesn't come in a tube. That's exciting. So see how this is just sort of blending over this, this background. Yeah. So just, you just take it and you just go. I love it. It uses a lot of alizarin. Again, because it's a transparent color. That's okay. And so that's just something you just need to think about. You just go. Okay, I know it's going to be this crimson heavy. If you're painting two different reds, you may just have a. You'll still have as long as you get the darkness and lightness correct. You'll still have a great painting. It'll just feel a little different. I'm gonna just kind of brush this in, blend this in here, because I'll be real specific around the Santa when I put in his shadow. But I gotta draw him in to be specific. Know exactly where he is. We only see him because he's casting a shadow against the wall where he's hiding, he's being so secret. I really enjoy this painting. <laughs> I like it too. So this is about a one-to-one -one mixture of cad to crimson, so half cadmium. Right? Half crimson. Make sure I just kind of have this happening around here, different places. And <sighs> yeah, just stumble that here and get a little more crimson on my brush if I need to and half tone it. Just running it. Already, as soon as I get this center covered, it's starting to look like that spectacular wall. And it's starting to have that. Oh, yeah. The walls are glowing. Yeah. Which, and it's just going to be really about deepening these ranges, blending this out. You know, if you take this and you get a little of your alizarin and your black again and you go darker, you can get right up in these little areas and make sure that your corners... There's that the corners and the edges of your canvas are dark will be a really important part of this painting. And it's not that hard. You just you just think of this not even as a painting, but if you've ever done anything where you've had to, you know, create a vignette for craft project or anything, that's all you're doing. I'm gonna just brush this in. So these two areas, see I'm kind of scuffling this dark color in. When you scuffle the darker color in, this is another way of creating kind of a transition in a painting. So there's um, glazing, right, which is thin coats of paint. There's wet into wet, which is painting wet into wet. You know, your paint is all still wet. Uh, there's dry brushing. And in within dry brushing, there's this thing where we're using soft, scuffly little marks, little dry mark marked areas where we're creating transitions that are subtle because of the way that we're blending them, see? And then it's just working those back and forth, creates that wonderful texture. This is really good big on a wall, by the way. Yeah. I have done this. I have taken a wall, not joking, and shaded it just like this. Like the wall, like I shaded the corners and had the center and created a central light and everything. And it, it just, I remember. super gorgeous. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so I'm just back with a little of my lizard and I'm just making sure that I'm creating those nice transitions. Um, you may find um, that the alizarin is transparent enough that sometimes when you're scumbling, you will see a mild, 
almost foaming effect if you have water in your brush. Something people are sometimes taken by surprise that can happen. And what that is, let's see if I can get it going, kind of see it a little bit. See, right there? Mm -hmm. You can see it. That's what I mean. So my paint's transparent, and it's thin on my brush, and I have water. What you don't know about acrylic paint is it has a ton of foaming agents in it. Anti-foaming. There's a lot in a good paint that's trying to prevent it from doing that. Back to my alizarin in my cad, and I'm going to get a little brighter cad now. It's a little less alizarin, a little more cad red. And I'm going to come here and take this just slightly brighter red. And softly, I'm going to turn my brush different directions. Turn it different, different, different directions. Brushing around. Different, different little. Sometimes this way, sometimes this way. Always super soft, letting the edge of these bristles soften and blend out the mark before it. Um, so that's a lot of times why I, uh, the foaming is why I suggest people not add things like um, soap to help their paint blend or glycerin mm -hmm. because that counteracts a lot of the engineering in your paint. This is an interesting question. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh, sneezing no problem with me. Okay. Uh, what is the difference between alizarin crimson and quinacridone crimson? crimson? Um, the quinacridone, and I have some here is a titch pinker and more violet at the same time. Um, you'll see the difference. I'm, I might even have John, I don't know if John can find it during the show because it's in my red bucket, but it's one of the colors I have. When you add white to it, you'll see it as you lighten it, where it's different. Um, it would be like, if that's what you have, if you have quinacridone crimson, you can use it with your orange red though. Interesting. So yeah, well, it'll we'll just be here. slightly, you know, as long as you're like, I, I've got my values, you can make some, some hue changes. That's the, the colors of paints. See how I'm going right here and I'm just, uh, the, the paint's getting brighter and more into the. Yeah, I do. Come in here and just. I'm going to scuffle, scuffle, scuffle. I love the scuffles. This is my favorite part. So right on this, see how this brush is, brush is starting to edge here? Yep. This is how filberts happen, by the way. Um, and I'm just push, wiggle, 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 push, wiggle, 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 push, wiggle, wiggle, push. This makes the nicest kind of texture. You can get right into your CAD in a couple spots here. Not too much, though, because you really want Santa to be the source of most of that brightness. It's okay to have a smidge of it on the wall, that bright. Here we go, just, is that nice? Just little, 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 little bit, little bit, little bit, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Not hard. You can see the shape of my brush. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Nicely, nicely placed, right? A little more crimson, a little more cad, and we're almost through the background. Somebody was like, I'd like this as its own video. Yeah, this is really neat how this is all coming together with this background. It's one of my favorite kinds to do. I've got just a little cad on my brush now. I'm going deeper into the alizarin as I come to these outside edges so that it's noticeable here, but not so bright over these dark regions because we want to make sure that they feel red but also as if they're lit very dramatically drama on your canvas i'm going to switch over here so if a nice angled over here my alizarin a little cad and just make sure that this has got a soft edge You know, you can always come back. You feel that you've got too much red for the area with your black. You can even use the gesso if that's all you have. See, it's all good. I'm 
just make sure that this is really rich down here. I think that's all we should do until we get our Santa in. So our next stage is going to be either getting up and stretching and moving around and making sure we feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Or drying your canvas, whichever whichever direction you want to go. It looks like kind of like orange, like red smoke. Mm, yeah. Mm, can I have a tissue? Yeah, one second. Hold on just a second, folks. I'm going to go uh, help us in here for a second. Now you can say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, you're back. So it's just like winter, and I find that my sinuses act up once we put the heater on. And <sighs> yes, it and does. It's a whole thing. <laughs> whole thing. Okay. Let's dry this, and I'm going to show you how to draw on your Santa. All right. All right? Let's do it. And while she's drying that, I'll say, we go over here and look at all of the people who are here in the chat to see us and say, Wow. Yeah, we had to turn the sound off there just for a quick, short moment uh, to make some adjustments in studio on the microphone. And then now we're back. But she's warming or she's drying the canvas uh, because of the scumbling. And, you know, you guys saw that that it can lift up on the uh, on the coatings on those more inexpensive canvases. So we're just trying to make sure that it gets dry fully that way uh, as she starts to paint in the Santa there. You know, and that's why you see her rubbing the nails on there. Uh, is, is we don't want that that to come off. So, yeah. Other than that, thank you guys for coming and joining us today. It's really, really great to have so many of you here with us. You know, we just we love to do this. Oh my, there's a lot of people here. This we just you know, it's sort of oh, it's always incredible <laughs> when we have so many people come together to paint with us. Um, that you know, it just. To just something we appreciate. So please share up your paint, your paintings. Don't forget to go to theartsherpa.com. Check out all the res resources you have there. The traceable there is there. The reference photos are there. And uh, you can, of course, share your photos there with us too. So Always good. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Now you could use, uh, you could use any color to, yes. on, uh, to get this background technique. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, you could... You, okay, so if you were to take this and put it into a black and white picture, what you're really trying to paint is the values. If you could use blue, you could use greens, you could use golds. It works really, I'm again, like I've done it with house paint. It just really works. You need a much bigger brush for house paint, though. Mm. <laughs> so that's always interesting. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to use my T-square just to make sure right, that I'm about in the same ranges about like if I look here he's how far down is he he looks to be just under four inches down which is just 10 centimeters so I'm gonna make a mark just under four inches down and I will make sure that somewhere here this has got to be the top of his head right and he comes over about just past five and a half inches. So I know I'm going to have an elbow about five and a half inches over. And that lets me know I didn't even take my, I, I like let my dark get um, too like close to him. So I've got an elbow that's coming out this far. So I'll have to put some dark back here. And then he's going to come off the canvas. So what I first do is I just sort of figure out where what his boundaries are. If you think about this as, I can erase all this chalk. So if you think about this as his boundaries, you're trying to put him in to this space. Sometimes when you're drawing, it's hard to know where to put it. So, it's, so you want to create relationships so you can size things. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to give myself a little round circle. 
seriously that serious, I'm gonna give myself a little round circle. I'm leaving about a thumb's width from the edge of the canvas because I need room for a little bit of his beard and his fluff to show. Right. Now, shoulders, I like to do them like this. I like to actually create like this hanger. Make a curved line that's a little bit like a small frown whenever I'm putting in shoulders. Right. And then I know he's gonna have a fairly large barrel here for his body because he's Santa. He's had some cookies. It's a, it's a very fattening job. And, you know, that's the perk. <laughs> now, his skirt, right, is going to come out somewhere around here. And I like the flared out skirt. Some of you guys question my decision, but I like it when it's like belted and there's a lot of extra fabric and it flares out. Those are the Santas that I like to get pictures with the kids with. Yeah, it's like a Tudor jacket. Like a Tudor jacket, exactly. I like I like those too. So his little fur kind of curves a little bit from off canvas on and comes up here. So you sketch that and it's like a little bell circle. See that right there? Here's a trick. If you're trying to learn how to draw and you need to know how to put objects, you know, in relationship to each other, especially when you're drawing something not from life, but from fantasy or imagination or, you know, different things. Elbows, when they're down, should be about on a fulcrum. If you imagine this is a fulcrum to the waist. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. If the elbow was to be turned or anything there, it would be to the waist. And so now this elbow probably would go to his waist. If you don't like a line that you have, all you have to do is take clean water. And look at that. You can just erase any chalk line right off your canvas as long as you're not using some grease baked. If you're using grease-based chalk, that would be very bad. Don't use grease-based chalk. You want kids' chalk like for a chalkboard. Dry this off a little bit. Okay, so that's what you're trying to do is you're just trying to talk about this shoulder that's holding some presents. Right, got that there. And I love my present. My present is like one of my happy things because it's like... He's, he's got a purpose here. I really like that part in the narrative. So first I'm going to draw a line straight up, right? Straight up. I'm gonna draw a parallel line to it, right? And just do this off at the top. That's pretty fun. Now, the pr he's a little bit foreshortened, which means that this is closer to us and these are far away. And so these lines have to converge just a titch. So when you're doing this line, just make sure, and I did this first one in with just paint, just make sure it's at a slight angle, right? Then you're gonna bring this line straight down. And we use these lines to guide our bow in. Yeah, I can just erase all around. And I can do this with a big wet brush or anything like before I varnish. So it's uh, pretty helpful, the chalk. <laughs> pretty good stuff. So this is all it is into this shape of Santa. Yeah. Now, I feel like you guys are such a creative bunch, you're going to be able to take this and do a lot with it. Yes, definitely. You're like, oh, but you haven't drawn the hat in. No, I kind of do that um, during the painting process. You know, if it'll help you. It's like I hear you in my head. If it'll help you. <laughs> I don't know if that's healthy or not. Yeah, no, it was very helpful. <laughs> I hear the questions in my head. I'm going to just drop this down now because there's a shadow coming down his back I'm going to do. And if I know where this basic sort of shape is, that I may be painting later, it'll help me. And I'll say that my fluff's going to come on either side and around a little bit, if that'll help you too. Because you're blocking that stuff in and you're going to want to know where that is. I'm going to get a smaller brush. I think I'm going to get a number six right here. And I'm going to start putting in, I like to put in my shadows first a little bit. And some of my values, like I might put in my belt, I might put in my shadows. I'm going to put in some of my darker values. I'm going to shade around him, come back and hit his highlights and he'll be basically done. So first let's 
load our brush up with a little bit of black, either black. These are actually the same color, which is why I like Mars Black and the uh, Liquitex Black Gesso is they're the same color. So they're interchangeable for me. And I'm going to do, it's interesting, the circle comes down, but actually I like to do my belt at an opposing angle. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. A lot of times I put in uh, my belts and those accents last, but on him, it's really nice to put in any of these anchor objects. I'm gonna go straight across. Can you guys see how I'm straight across? And then I'm gonna stroke across once I have it sketched in. Super easy, stroked across. Now he's got a belt and we can see it. All right, that's lovely. We're almost seeing the other side. I'm gonna take a little of this dark right here and I'm gonna help myself out by coming up his side and up the sleeve a little bit. You guys good? Just up the sleeve, not a thick line, it's a thinner line, don't get frustrated. So I've loaded my paint, it's on the edge of my brush and I'm gonna just make sure that I've got a little, the beginning of a shadow here and maybe even a little under here. And I think these are the darkest values I have on him, except maybe a little bit at the back of the hat. All right, where I'm starting to put in the fur. And I'll even put in some wrinkles here that the hat's going to be pressed over and wrinkled about. So we have some dark values in there and we can see what's happening. He's sketched in so I can move nope. him back over and you guys can just use your picture and picture reference and I got my guy. So let's put in some shadows, some dark values and we kind of know how to get those because we take our alizarin crimson and we mix it with our black and we deepen it, right? We don't yeah. want it to be black. But we want it to be like his velvet is very dark and in shadow. You have this area even a little darker than that, I would say. Now, just to recap just pulling this, here, this in. Yeah? Yeah, just to recap a, a bit here. The reason why you did the red on red yes. is, 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 is to create that dynamic, you know, sort of contrast between there, yeah? With the shading and... Yeah, well, I needed the two reds to make enough contrast between the values. Um, yeah. Cool reds tend to recede. Um, it, those are anything in the blues and greens and purples of the color wheel. Warm colors tend to come towards us. So those are things like the sun and fire and those things. Those, they're just things that we make of think that we think of cool, but they also visually go distant or closer depending on if they're cool or warm. So using that in telling this story, I can take a cool and warm red and create a very dynamically lit wall and also hide a matched red Santa on the wall and tell this very funny story of the Santa who's like, He's hiding kidding. on a red wall going, nobody sees me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and awesome. I like to, in my artwork, tell some funny stories. I think, um, I think it's important. Not that it's, it's not also important to tell, like, sad stories, but it's also, I like to make sure that the things on my wall, um, if at all possible, help me smile. And, and I think that, I'm going to bring this dark shadow to the side here. I'm pulling this around, and my brush strokes are the direction of the fabric. See that? Yeah. How I'm imagining the fabric wrinkling and pulling down this way and so I'm creating this first dark value there. Didn't mean to interrupt babe. Just wanted no, to no, make no, sure everybody knew that. You're great. I'm, I, I come across I'm the top interrupting of the belt. you technically speaking. <laughs> okay. Well it's a team more it's a team effort. <laughs> so I'm just taking this dark burgundy and where the belt and this is true of fabric if ever you're painting a belt, where the belt is it needs to be a little bit darker, doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit in shadow. So I've got that going and I know underneath the hat I've got a bit of a of a shadow going right here, right under this. And this will get adjusted once I put that in. I just need to know that this starts here. Coming along. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to definitely have this dark color under my belt. And then the direction of the skirt will help determine my brush stroke. Use either black you have, it's just, right? So the kilt, what, tutor jacket. 
Tudor Jane. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's John's, kind of John's much more up on uh, medieval man's, men's fashion. <laughs> I, uh, only because I have to wear it sometimes. <laughs> this is super true and super weird. So, in continuing. <laughs> I guess that is. We're, we're putting in but I, I mean, I like it. It's awesome for me. I'm going to just continue to add this dark red, even right over these dark shadows, just back here, just making sure that under the hat has this deep value, this deep shadow. And I will take a little of this. Yeah, so the and just blend my deep, deep value and a shadow under the arm. Super helpful. And maybe a little bit along that. So that's the dark, dark that I've got to get in. What's wonderful about this next part is as you begin to lighten it up, it's like he develops out of the wall. It's one of the few times that acrylic painting does what watercolor does, which is develop in, in front of your face. Hmm. So I'm going to grab a little of my alizarin and a little of my cad and do my mid-tone mixture, right? which is one part alizarin and a little bit of cad. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to, from right here, I'm going to just pull down, look very lightly, stroke down a little bit of fabric highlight that's happening here. Even going to come here a little bit on the shoulder. Going to come back here and see how light it is? Mm -hmm. And then as I'm going closer to the darkest part of where he shadowed, it's going to be lighter as it's coming. And you can pull this, some of these little wrinkles, right out of the belt. See how we're doing? Suddenly the belt starts to happen. I'm going to come up here and start that. And I'm using the direction of my paint stroke to talk about his coat, which it does really beautifully. Just soften this right here. I'm just... And if you take away your wrinkles, you take away your shadow, you can always come and put it right back in. You're not, you're not ever just stuck. Making sure that this is... There we go. So it's not our brightest red by any means. It's our darker red. But against this black background, it's quite... It pops, doesn't it? Against that dark value, it starts to pop. His coat starts to glow. Which one were you putting out there? A lizard. So I have, right now, you can kind of see it. I have my CAD red medium and my lizard. See how transparent the lizard is compared to the CAD? Mm -hmm. You can see that the black bars on the lizard now, are uh, definitely showing more than on the CAD. And, and you're still using the same brush. Which, which one is that? This is a number six bright by Cambridge. It's a, it's a bristle brush. Those are always fun. This is my dark side of my hat. So I'm going to make sure I'm more to the, like, a lizard over here and start pull back some highlights. Now I need to have a dark shadow, like definitely right there where the hat is bent over. So I'm coming to the outside edge. And I'm painting with this red. You can even come and pull some of this red towards where the hat is bent over. And pulling that down. Now we've got the hat starting to come in. Oh, wow, it does. It just comes right in from the shadows. Just, it develops right in from the shadows. I'm going to add just a little more CAD to my paint, and I'm going to come on this outside edge, pull in just a smidge of a highlight that's catching maybe some hat. A little bit here, but a lot more as it comes here. little soft dry brush right there just making sure that the wrinkles are looking like fabric rolls That's what we're doing we're looking like fabric rolls so alizarin and cad and so compared to the dark colors these are so much lighter that it feels like they're glowing this was like a whole thing in paint when uh, people figured out that dramatic lighting to create this sense of something being a glow or lit from within. Cadmium paints kind of perfected that because of their nature. It's, it's 
everything that made Thomas Kincaid's careers and uh, Bob Ross's careers a lot about the cadmium and understanding that color theory. Now, Being able to create that sense of glow and, and my hat got a little thin, so I'm going to thicken it up a bit. So Ashley had a question here. All uh, right. Hi, how, Ashley. <laughs> how do you know when to use a bristle brush versus a synthetic brush? So the thing is with acrylics, bristle brushes are great and also terrible at the same time. Um, what's great about them is they do wonderful dry brushing. They're resilient. You can condition and clean them so they have some, you know, nice care that you can take of them. If they don't have a synthetic filament blended with them, though, they will overtake water and they'll soften and they become like mush. Yeah. So a lot of acrylic artists will have a ton of bristle brushes that they use as dry brushing and they just don't really put it in water. I think it's dry brushing. It's great for that. But if you can get a good brush with the synthetic blend, then you can actually use it in the water and paint paintings. And it's fantastic for a whole bunch of techniques. I really love it. So, and you're just really looking for what isn't going to soak everything up and mush out. That makes sense. Now, what we're and you should just know that they put on every single case that a brush is good for every medium, whether it is or it isn't. That's like a whole thing. I'm going to get a little of my black here. No, we didn't. And just come here and just come right under the hat just a smidge and make sure that I've got some of those wrinkles kind of accentuated again. A little bit, see? Just, mm -hmm. just a little. I just want a little bit. Now that I've got that, I'm going to come do my arm in my skirt. I'm going to give a big art hug to Chrissy's grandma who's painting along with us today. Sue. Hi, Chrissy's grandma. We love Chrissy. She's a longtime Sherpa. One of the, one of our, our, she does some great paintings. I love to see when she shares. and I love to see her ATC cards when they come through. She's a really amazing painter and I'd love to have her as part of our community. So thank you for, for sharing time with us today, Sue. I'm pulling the mix of the CAD and the alizarin into the creases here. See how I'm making it like folds? And I'm using my brush stroke so it's curved. It's curved, curves. See how that implies kind of his elbow? And lets there start to be like a little crease that's happening. Like right there where you start to see the folds and the crease of the fabric. And now you can see the seam line on his um, outfit. I'm gonna bring some of this down. And I'm going to grab a little more one-to-one, -one, half a lizard, half cad. And let's just pull this down. Maybe come across. They are pulling the color down. Take a little bit of it over here where you can and keep pulling it down. Gonna make sure that where the belt is, it's almost like, you know, little little highlights are catching the folds and the creases. And fabric is really a lot of fun to paint, in my opinion. In my humble opinion. So now I have this basis in. I have him sort of laid in. I can also do a couple things right now. Anywhere my paint do? is dry and it's appropriate, I can clean off my chalk. Oop, which will start to clean him up a great deal. And where I have it, where I don't need to go back and paint again. Yeah, it just comes right off. Just a little water and a brush. Good stuff is the chalk. <laughs> hmm. Good stuff. Eventually, you guys will be in a place where you just sketch everything in paint and you won't necessarily have to chalk it in. But for right now, chalk away. Now I'm going to do something fun here. I'm going to take out my yellow ochre. This is mm. sort of a, a brownish gold color. And I'm going to take out my titanium white. Squeeze some of that out. Uh oh, it's plugging. I got to do something about that. Um, so I don't have good cat management. I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush, but in the same kind of make. So see how this is just a little bit smaller. And the reason I'm getting a smaller brush is these are kind of tiny areas that I'm, you know, I'm dealing with. So I'm going to take a little of my black, get my brush wet. I'm going to take a little of my black over to 
my yellow ochre. Doesn't take a lot. See, it's like this gray yellow. Mm hmm. All right, so we get this gray yellow. And I'm going to pull a little more yellow into it and a little bit of white until we get right about here. You see that color? Yeah. So it's lighter than what's here, but you can definitely see it's grayed with the black and all of that. And then I'm going to come over here. And on the corner of my brush, I'm going to make a little flick. Flick, 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 flick. Flick, flick, flick. So the pressure is really light. And it really is just about this little touch flick, touch flick, touch flick, touch flick. Tucked under my hat. Pull some over here. So everything is super fluffy. I find fluffiness to be good. Not just on Groot. <laughs> 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 All right. So, I mean, Groot. Wrong property. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You see how this is a little flick? And that little flick implies the little fur? Yes. Flick, 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 flick. Flick, 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 flick. We've also got our very important one down here at the end of hat, which is a round ball. So just, if you can, try to flick out a fluffy little round ball. Fluffy round ball. Yes. Yay. And, and you'll put more, uh, uh, it, it gets to get lighter as you put more layers yeah, on I it. would hope so. Otherwise, it's going to be real dark and brown. He's, he's, he's sneaking in the shadows. He's sneaking. So you have to create the white on here. That's one of the ways that you see him because he's hiding. Right? But you don't want him so saturated and bright that you don't have values on even stuff like his first. So you see, I'm just pressing in and creating this little fluffy band here yeah i'm just if i need to i'm going to come around and turn it a little bit so it's easier yeah because i have a lip on the edge of my easel and i don't want to put my body in danger by turning me and not the painting another place that you can use this color i'm going to get my darker gold that i mixed while i'm here and you can come in right where the package is close to him is darker I'm going to pull that up a little bit. You can even have a little bit down here because right, it's dark. And then as I'm coming out, I'm just going to grab a little more ochre. It's not the pure ochre. I'm going to use that for last. But this is enough to start to create some values on my present. And you see them happening? Some more yellow here. There we go. There we go. So now we have a present in. We have some fur in. He looks like a little muddy. He looks a little dirty. <laughs> and that's really because he doesn't have his highlights in. Once his highlights come in, man, it is on. But before we put some highlights in, let's take our number 10 again. And if this ends up being too big, we'll switch down to a smaller brush. But let's make sure that we have a dark value that's happening around him. And actually, I'm going to just to be safe, I am going to switch to a six. The reason is, is I can paint a bigger brush. And sometimes when you're new, it's harder to paint bigger brushes in a space. Because it's hard to know how much pressure to apply and how to make their strokes smaller and all that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little alizarin and some of my black. Mm. Um. And it's going to be quite dark. This is not black but it's the darkest value we have on our painting and I'm going to come here to this side and I'm going to very lightly scumble in his deep deep shadow that is here yep. make sure that it's again not totally black but the darkest value on your canvas and I'm going to just push this around this sort of is right here where he's casting the shadow I'll blend that up and then I'm going to take this around his head, I need to put out some more alizarin. I'm going around his head, making sure I've got that shadow. Let's, uh, let's make sure we come on the edge of our brush and do the what? The scumble. 
Monica says that uh, one of the ladies in the office there where she's at looked over and just fell and just says she loves that painting that you're doing. <laughs> it's happy, right? It's a happy painting. It's a happy painting. My kids saw it and instantly were just completely enchanted with it. You'll notice I'm putting out more alizarin than any other color. <laughs> Tiffany uh, uh, says that she loves the idea of a uh, steampunk Santa. <sighs> I love steampunk art. I, we've done some on the channel. It's tough to simplify it because mm. it's by its nature sort of ornate and complicated. Yeah. And so it's really interesting to find designs that feel steampunk but are also um, simple enough to teach in, you know, under five hours. Right. So I'm just making sure I have some more of my dark, you know, color. I'm going to come right here around this very carefully. And, you know, you want to be able to do this if you paint very carefully. So I'm on the edge of my brush. Right? And I'm wiggling. I'm wiggling. Don't feel the need to rush. you got time. If your attention span is wandering during a painting, like you're finding it's hard to concentrate and keep at it, and you're rushing techniques, right? Like you're, you're getting frustrated and you're rushing techniques, you know, slow down, take a break, take a couple of days to paint something. That's okay. If you find you're just going blah, 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 real fast, it's just that you're fatigued. It's not that you're not artistic or talented or any of those things. It's just very likely that your brain is fatigued. I get like that during math. Yeah. I just want to do the pop quiz and go, see, 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 I'm done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I get it. I understand the fatigue. So I'm still taking my alizarin crimson and my black. This is a very important stage of this painting. The adjustment on the wall that we're going to do is what really pulls this together. It's not particularly hard. It's just knowing that it needs to happen. You might not be like, oh, I painted right on around, so I'm good. But if you don't give him the little contrast shadow, he's way too camouflaged for the work. If that makes sense. And he won't pull just by his highlights. I'll put some of this out here. Kind of blend it out into the turning him on his side. He should at this point start to pop. He is popping. From from his background. It should help him a great deal. Make sure it's dark, dark, dark by his little skirt here. Like I'm, I'm going to try to get even more black on here. This will be like really dark right here. Going out. And see how I can press in and not disrupt what I've already painted? This is not disrupting. I'm just back and forth. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right. Now, you guys should have a shadow. Have all that. You can take this minute while he's drawing and resolving and you're there to pop a little bright color on the walls. So take oh, a crimson. We love, we love the pop of, of bright color. And take just a smidge of your uh, alizarin. You don't want to put pure cat on the wall, but you want it to be pretty bright. You can even go crazy and add, and this is just, look how little. If you add too much, it's going to be just a crazy orange. And come and add this next, see this little value? Now I know where everything is. I can add and blend, see, coming back and blending. Some of this lighter space. But not too much, right? Because we don't want an orange wall. We want a red wall. And a little of our cat can do a lot to make our red feel red. But if you have, just grab me some alizarin. If you have too much of it, then it won't. I'm just doing any touch-ups that I want to do. I'm looking for places where I'm not happy with the balance or with the blend. And I'm just making sure that I'm keeping my gorgeous wall gorgeous. If I move any of this red into him, look, I'm making sure I leave this dark halo. Yeah. This stippled shadow in this, like, it's almost well, like a candlelight has caught him. Now, hmm. while you have your hand out there, yes, they were just noticing that bling. Oh, so 
that was uh, they were they, they were like, okay, you gotta show us the, the finger armor there. So I'm gonna zoom in just so that everybody can get a little picture of it. You can, you can rotate it back and forth and see your little bling. Oh, okay, that's enough show and tell. I wanted to see your awesome bling. Thank you. I love my bling. It is. So I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of times Marshalls has Betsy Johnsons. Mm-hmm. No, you like uh, yeah. It's- you gotta hunt them, and in my area it's tough because my mother-in-law gets there first. <laughs> My so I wouldn't shop my area. She cleans them out, and then I have to borrow pieces from her. My son has a Betsy Johnson backpack. The my daughter has a lot of Betsy Johnson, too. So it's, it's her favorite thing to gift. And what I'll say is the place to find it is at Marshall's. It's true. You do. Super good deal. Well, that's like- not, not that you can't just grab it online or on Amazon or any of that. You can. I'm just saying. <laughs> So I, I, I wasn't I'm trying so to. Weird. I, I wasn't trying to derail you. I just I, everyone was asking about your your. Uh... No, no, I don't feel derailed. Okay, good. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab my um, small brush here. This is a number two. Um, for me, it's a filbert. You could, sometimes you see these, and they'll call be called shaders. You just want something with a very small diminished size. See how small that is, so that you can put in your ribbon. And I like to put in my ribbon. I like to take a little of my. Honestly, my black and yellow and grayed out. There we go. See how this is just definitely not white? Much more grayed out than this. To make the ribbon ha- feel like it's white, it's real interesting. You've got to paint the base of it in not white. So how I do this is, is that this one is going to be right here in about the middle of the package. And I'm going to make just a fine line coming up. And then I use the width of the brush to help me create the width of the ribbon. I rest my hand on my canvas, if you guys haven't tried that. This only doesn't work if your hand is, like your canvas is wet and your hand is heavy. (laughs) But that's how I keep my hand steady. How are our little brushes doing? I hope they're doing Very, really good and enjoying their Santa painting. They're loving this. The big brushes, the little brushes, all the brushes. I mean, you know, and and some crayons too. We're all enjoying this. All right. We got some crayons. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a crown because I. <laughs> that's what I paint with. <laughs> crayons are really cool. I like them. They're amazing. I love I love Crayola. They're a company of pigment, aren't they? They're. It's, it's and it's all contained in a nice controllable stick. <laughs> it's like a dream of mine, like sometimes to talk to their pigment specialist to find out how they source their colors. And uh, not that they've ever invited me out, so I guess if you work for Crayola, I'm interested in coming out and seeing how you source your colors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's fascinating to me about how our art materials are made. You know, I think that's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down, straight down. And that's how I wrap my virtual package. Now, I'm also going to add a bow. But I'm going to do that a little bit later. Simply because I still have some highlights. Put in a loop. A loop. That's it. But see, the loop is dark, so if I highlight one side of the loop, then it becomes a two-dimensional thing. It's really cool. Uh Uh-huh. And then I'm going to just make a little ribbon come down and a little ribbon come down. That's all that's got to be. And if you grab a little of your black, and this has got to be on a small brush, if you're going to do this part, you can come along your canvas and make a little crease in the package. Here, and maybe like a little bit here. Maybe under the underside. And then I like to come here. So this lining just helps this be defined from the wall, if that makes sense. We're just defining it. And you can add a little bit of this to your ribbon. So if you want to like show a little shadow right here, you can add a little of that. Maybe one coming up the side. So now that has some dimension. We're going to come down and let's just show that our ribbon has a little shadow. 
Maybe the underside of our bow has one right here. And you can even make a little round space that you have a shadow for there. Once you have that, what you can do is you grab just some of your white. And you can tone it a little bit with the ribbon color, but you want it to be pretty bright. And come down the center, very light, a couple places. All right, see how that pops? Oh yeah. Now top of the top of the ribbon, top of the ribbon, center of the bow. Top, top, center. Maybe a little bit back there, a little highlight. And it's these dynamic plays of light and darkness that really make him sort of pop out of that that darkness. That you it know. is. It's it's those things that make him visible and interesting to our eye. And look at how his package is just totally showing. And we haven't even put the color that makes it amazing. So I'm rinsed out my brush, and I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. And I'm going to come here to the top of my package and just paint in a little brightness. Look at that. And it's actually interesting if you paint around the bow because then you can kind of leave some shadow if you need it. Under where that is, you can come down there. Let's put some more yellow ochre on this side. Not all the way down because the package is somewhat in shadow, right? Just making sure I got some bright. And my brightest corner is right here. See how that's super bright now? Rinse out and get some white, some just white. Got fluid, it's a good place to use it, but if you don't, just get your white. And you're going to, at this corner, make a little highlight. I like to put one right where the fabric bends and even right here across the bow. A little bit of one here. Yeah. Right there you go. Then I take, I just tap, 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 tap. See me tap, tap? That's it. Little taps and another little tap in the corner. And now my package is shiny. It's gold paper. Isn't that lovely? That is. Last thing. See that first yellow gray that we made that had a little bit of white in it? Right here. If you need to make it again, make it again, which was a little, you know, black and your yellow ochre and then a whole bunch of whole bunch of white. You want it a little more gray than, than white. So see how that's not a bright, bright white, but it's light. Come here to the belt. Brush is super dry. Super dry. Oh, that's little highlights there. Yeah, because leather belts are... They're shiny. They're shiny. I'm going to take across there, and I'm going to pull some reflections down. Do that, tap, 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 and then one right at his waist. Just a little bit right here, just at his back. Where his belt is shiny. Let's see how it looks. See? Now his belt's shiny. You can see his belt. So I have all this. I'm nearly done. Not wow. even kidding. Now, it's just the cads, ma'am. Just so the I, cads? Just the cads. So I'm gonna, I will tip it with just a little alizarin because this is almost, in painting, there's something called a mother color. It's a color that's almost in everything in your painting, except for a couple places you hold it out and it makes it brighter. So, but I really want it to be a lot closer to a pure cad. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to come over the top of his hat. I know in this, on the corner, I'm still on a number six. Pull like a highlight on a wrinkle there and a wrinkle there. I'm going to make one highlight right here. I'm going to come down this side, brightest side of the hat, right? Yeah. Because the hat would be brightest. Right here. Now I have to fix this little shadow when I'm all done. I'm going to put just a hint. Just, a, just, just one there. Ugh. So tempting to go crazy. A little bit around. So see, now we have this bright, bright highlight on this hat. Come here. 
How you guys doing? Really good. This is exciting. We're just sort of the last bits of it are coming together here. It's just amazing when it happens. I'm gonna come across this little shoulder and I'm gonna pull down. I'm on the flat of the brush and I'm just dry brushing and pulling down at first from the shoulder on the flat and then I'm going to accentuate some of the fabric wrinkles and a few coming up from the waist. Not a lot. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Now I leave a little dark space at the shoulder to imply a seam. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come right here. That's a nice red mark right there down the front. Down the front. I went almost into pure CAD there to get that around this elbow. Paying attention to the creases. Brushing those lightly in. Look at that. Now we've got our little red arm popping out. Let's look at him big. Yep. He's showing, isn't he? Yeah. You're hiding behind the picture in picture, though. <laughs> I am? Well, oh. when, I, when I go to this screen, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. It's just a thing that happens. It is. All right. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to just pull down these little highlights. You can come across if you need to. You're just creating a space where the... Obviously, from about this point back, it's got to be in dark shadow, right? So I have to be restrained over here. But I don't have to be that restrained over on this side of him. Because he's super red, and... Even though he's in shadow, even though he's hiding, even though he's being sneaky, sneaky, we still have to think about that. Now, I just want to soften this shadow. So I'm going to take my alizarin and just a smidge of my black. And I just want to soften this a bit under him. So by taking this into the deeper, darker red, it makes it much less of a overwhelming shadow. See this here? Yeah. I'm just softening it a little bit. You can come back and reaffirm it, but just pull a little red through here, just the alizarin. It's transparent enough because it's such a transparent color that it will tone this back, and that's what you want. And then once you have that how you want it, then you can come back with a little of your black and a little of your red and soften that just a smidge out this way and under the collar there we go we can kind of darken over here on this side of the ball right because that's where the shadow would be grab a little black and be like dun, 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 dun. just a little bit there we go that's all we had to do wow just fixing it now last thing mm -hmm. rinse 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 you can switch to your two again because we're going to be back in the fur we're going to come over here. We're going to take a smidge, smidge, smidge of black over to our yellow, 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 making this sort of gray yellow. Right. Wipe that off. We just want the pigment on there. Now you're going to grab just a lot more. So this is a whole shade lighter than what we've already put in, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to start... Adding this next value. This is not our lightest value or our last value, but it's the one that's going to help us the most in our process. So leaving this pretty dark over here, right? But there's this second value. It's one shade lighter. Let's uh fluff up his little puff. Let's come right here. Fluffing. I love the fluff. Fluff, fluff, fluff. This is like a little comma stroke. But I do two different directions. If I need to flip this over. And this is where he works for me. It's so strange. Like where he feels amazing for me is in this stage. And I'm going to let this be lighter as it comes towards the back. Now, don't rinse your brush. But get some pure uh, titanium on there. You haven't rinsed your brush, it's just pure titanium. And it's going to be like that eggshell at the depot. Mmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So not with the 75 kinds of white. But look at look at this white against this background. Wow. By tinting it a little bit with the fur color, it makes it look like an oil painting. One of the ways that acrylic artists can do that. I'm just touching this very softly. And I'm adding little bits of the story of him there. And just you can just put a little smidge here, but not much because in shadow. Come to his little puff ball. Reload if you need it. I'm out of pigment. And make sure that you get a puff ball, a little highlight on that side. Check that out. Wow. It's like an oil painting. I love it. I'm trying to figure out where. I don't have to do this the whole way, but I need to have this a couple places on his fluff. Just being very loose. Paying attention to what I'm doing. As I'm going to come back here, I'm going to be lighter with the pigment. See how I'm lightening it up? Because I don't want this to be bright either. This is bright. The rest of it cannot be bright. All right. I feel like he's super fluffy. And that, my friends, is how you paint yourself a secret Santa. That is a pretty awesome secret Santa. You just got to sign it, don't you? I just got to sign just... it. What I did for this when I signed it, you know how I'm always like, don't sign your painting in red. <laughs> <laughs> you signed okay. it in red, didn't you? You sign it, this one in red, because here's what. Your signature is part of the composition. Mm -hmm. It lets people know who made it. Every time they see it, if you give it as a gift, they're going to be thinking of you. But it also impacts every viewer on the painting. So all you want to do as an artist is think about that and then if you're just a little intentional about your signature, you know, you won't unwind all your hard work. So you can see how in this case, if it stays still, signing it in red is actually pretty muted and appropriate. <laughs> We did it. We did it. We painted the Santa. Yes, we did it. We did it. He's secret and he's hiding on the red wall. The red wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I love it. Just a little caffeinated. Well, I But guess. I love him. I love the story. Thank you for participating in the 12 Days Live. Two more amazing paintings left mm -hmm. for this live event. Not the last paintings of the year by any means. So many cool things coming. I cannot wait to see your red on red. And hopefully you'll take the skill and you'll be like, maybe I could do a blue on blue. Yeah. That'd be pretty neat. Right? But notice I didn't use white to lighten any of this. Yeah, no, I didn't. used pure pigments from the tube and all that. And so if you do another color, don't use white to lighten it. Use another value in, like, use another blue or another green. Yeah, pigment intensity. Pigment intensity. You guys be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you with the easel really soon, like tomorrow. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>